never seen a lame man walk Never heard a dumb man talk Never seen a blind man see I promise you a pain is Never Ever seen a cancelled death Never seen all the poor get fed Never seen a prisoner set free I promise you a change is What is, what is up, podcast world? We're back, back again. Guess who's back? It's the Big C and Bigger T podcast. You I'm Big C. That's what you clicked on, and there's Big C. How you doing, Big C? Man, I'm fantastic. I am. I am fantastic. I'm. I'm so excited about today's guest picker. We had somebody else. We had somebody else lined up. He canceled on me last minute. You know what you do? You call in the lefty. Call I went in to the lefty. I called in the. Bullpen. I called in the lefty. Bring him out. There he is, Mister. You want to introduce him? Or you want me to introduce him? You introduce him. It is Mister Paul Allen Clark, my little brother, my baby oh, brother. Allen. Me and Travis once splashed this poor kid so many times on a trampoline. He didn't walk right for two weeks. That's <laughs> right. So, well, he still doesn't work right because of yeah, it. Probably, yeah, probably not. He's got a lot of health problems. It's all my fault. So, yeah, this this is the guy. If you want to feel sorry for somebody, yeah, like seriously, when when he has a big brother like Clint, mm-hmm. and Clint has friends like me, like, and we're deciding to wrestle, we're not going to throw each other around. <laughs> Who's going to lift that much? I mean, like, exactly. We wasn't that strong. So we got a little brother, and so Paul. Despite the fact that we were so mean to you growing up, how are you doing today? Not too bad. Not too bad. Enjoying the beautiful weather in Northwest Arkansas. Well, good, man. I know you uh, enjoy being out there. It is a nice day today. Look, we're going to get into our, our picks. Last week, we went a little long on this. We want to talk about some other things later. But we want to give you a recap on uh, last week. Well, uh, we're... In case you didn't watch or listen to last week's, we are picking 10 games, 10 most interesting games that we think of, uh, that we think is the most interesting anyway. And uh, we decided, you know what? All these other shows, they bring in experts. They bring in, you know, people that – famous people, you know, College Game Day brings in, you know, Eddie George and and, – Kane Brown this week, and I hear he was terrible. Yeah, that country guy, right? Yeah, I mean, he, you know, who, who country. Listens, who listens to country? Country, anyway. That's not country. a country. That's bro country. They need to get kicked in the pants. But anyway, we don't do that here. We decided we and Clint we want to compete against real people. Yeah, so real we people. brought in we brought in Wesley last week. We got Clint's little brother Paul this week, and not just that, Clint. We're not just competing against no. the likes of, of mm-hmm. Wesley Rowland. I don't think Paul knows this either. No. We're competing against Miss Sue Clark and Miss Betty Ward, my mother. We're getting our moms into this. So this will be the only week that we compete against everybody's competing against their mom. Because me and Paul have the same mom. That's right. Yeah. (laughs) And, you know, I don't know about y'all's mom. My mom is getting fired up about this. Oh. Like she's like asking, how did I do? How did I do? Hold on, mama. I need to count it up. See, I don't even know how I did. I'm too lazy to keep up my own picks. I can't remember who I picked. Well, here's our standings right now. All right. Tied for uh third or fifth, whatever, however you want to say it, is Miss Sue, Miss Betty, and Wesley. Oh, wow. I got to see. All got six correct. Oh, they all got six correct. Um, the hold on just a second. Wait, wait, I was wrong. Wait, no, Sue got seven correct. Oh, wow, she was the only one to get FSU correct. Sorry about that. Well, Notre Dame won. <laughs> 
Oh, that's right. I'm looking at the wrong level there. Okay. Never mind. Never mind. Never mind. She's this is awkward. Side. She's the only one. We don't, do we have a rewind button? Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. Sorry. I was right. I was right before. Those three had six. Clint comes in with seven correct. And the winner for week one oh, is the Bigger T. Oh, wow. That's me, y'all. I'm going to come back. Though. I got I mean, eight correct. I, I never would have thought. Anyway, oh, oh. that means I'll probably miss them all this week. So here we go. Paul got the games earlier, but he's just going to go off the fly here. Because that's how he rolls, and that's okay. And I got my little clipboard here where I'm writing all this down, so bear with me. All right, the first game we have Oregon number eleven playing Ohio State. Ohio State is number four, and Ohio State is favored by fourteen. He got Paul. Ohio State easily. Okay. Um, I, I think that's going to be a clean sweep from the Clark family. We're all going to Ohio State. They're on a different level. That um, Me and Betty said the same there. Next, we have Pittsburgh, Dan Marino's former college against Tennessee, Peyton Manning's former alma mater. Uh, Pitt is favored by one in that game. Now, on these favors – I just looked up a website. Some of them have changed by now. So don't count on those to be totally correct. All right. Paul, who you got? Oh, Pittsburgh. Pitt. I think they'll embarrass Tennessee. Clint, who you got? Tennessee started a little slow last week, but they got it going in the second half, which seems to be a theme of a lot of the SEC teams. So uh, Mama Sue and myself going Tennessee. All righty. Well, Paul is out on an island by himself there because Miss Betty and I both picked Tennessee. I think the SEC athletes win in the end. The next one is a big-time rivalry. We have Iowa versus Iowa State, and Iowa State is ranked higher at seventh, and Iowa's at 18, and Iowa State is a three-and-a-half point favorite but this is a rivalry game you can throw out those numbers what do you think guys Paul you want to go first yeah, I'll go first on this one I'm going to go with the home team Ohio State Iowa State okay yeah all right uh we're gonna make it a queen's a clean sweep for the Clark family Iowa State um college game day is going to be there and I just think it's going to be be a good one I think Iowa State is enjoying being – reversing the roles of being the big brother to the – to the what used to be big brother Iowa. Uh, me and Miss Betty feel the same way. North Carolina State playing against Mississippi State. Mississippi State's a one-and-a-half point favorite. Mississippi State had to make a big comeback last week to win that game against uh, – who was it they were playing? Uh, La uh, Tech. Yeah. Tech. So, uh, Paul, who do you think there? All right. I'm going to say Mississippi State is actually going to be the seller of the SEC West. So, I'm definitely going with the traveling team in there, NC State. They're actually looking pretty good. All right. Uh, Mama Sue went with Mississippi State. I'm going to agree with baby brother here, and I'm going to go North Carolina State. I'm not a – I'm not a big believer in this NC State football team. I mean, Mississippi State football team, even though they came back. Uh, Miss Betty said Mississippi State. I am going also with Mississippi State because the um, the Pirate just is inconsistent. And I think he had a bad game last game, and I think this is one of those games where he could come out and they could score 60. Uh, Memphis at Arkansas State. Memphis is just a four-point favorite at Arkansas State. What say you, my friends? Go ahead, Paul. Well, uh, unfortunately, I had the opportunity to watch the whole Memphis game while I was in Memphis, even though Nicholas State was such a competitive team for them. 
Um, I got to watch Arkansas State. I'm from Arkansas State. I went to, they actually let me go get my community college degree there. Thank you, Arkansas State BB. So I'm going to go with A State. A State. All right. Picking the upset. Right. Well, um, Mama Sue also picked Arkansas State. Um, I don't know why Arkansas State's football coaches don't want to start Lane Hatcher. I just don't get it. It, it, it boggles my mind. If, if they try, if they don't try Lane Hatcher out there, then I'm picking Memphis. So I don't have any faith in Booth Jones. I'm picking Memphis. Okay. I think they're going to trot Lane Hatcher out there. He went 12 for 12. With like three or four touchdowns? I mean, how can you not start him? Yeah. Um, Plus, the kid was a wrestling state championship four years in a row. And and, and a football state champion four years in a row. I pick Arkansas State. Washington, who got upset, didn't they? By Montana. By Montana, the mighty Grizzlies. Mighty Montana Grizzlies, that's right. Or at Michigan. Michigan's a four and a half point favorite. Paul, who you got? I know Washington wants to rebound, but I don't think Michigan is the state is the university you want to rebound in. I got Michigan easily. Okay. Make, it a clean, make it a clean sweep for the Clarks. We're all going Michigan. Okay. I also went Michigan. Miss Betty went with Washington. I don't think she likes the khaki pants. Uh, I, play, I don't like our ball at all. Yeah. All right, here we go, boys. Here it is. We'll talk about this more later, but Texas comes in at number 21, a six-point favorite. I've heard the line anywhere from four and a half up to nine for this game. Plays in, in Fayetteville against Arkansas. Actually, Arkansas has a better record against Texas in Austin than they do in Fayetteville, especially over the last several years. What say you, Texas at Arkansas? Paul? I'm in Northwest Arkansas. I get to see the University of Arkansas Stadium quite frequently. Unfortunately, I'm still going to go with Texas by one point. Okay. Clint? Mama Sue going with Arkansas. Um, I think I Marco Polo before this, told you I was leaning going towards Texas. Texas struggled in the first half against uh, Louisiana. Um, I don't know if Louis, who would win in a game between Louisiana and Rice. Um, it'd probably be competitive. Um I'm going to go ahead and go with my gut and say Arkansas. Um, I think um, both teams struggle. It's a night game at Fayetteville. Um, Texas starting to think of a young quarterback. So I'm going to, I'm going to go with Arkansas. I think he may struggle in a hostile environment. But I could be wrong. Yeah, we could all be wrong, but Miss Betty's picking Arkansas. I got to pick Arkansas. I can't, I can't let that name come out of my mouth. There you go. A game, I'll throw up in front of you. So we, we'll let's not do that. All right, we got some NFL games to talk about here. Uh, we got three of those we want to do. So Arizona playing Tennessee. Can Kyler Murray do it this year? His coach? Are they, you know, the prettiest coach in football? He is a is he, gonna, is he gonna be able to lead this team? They've added some new receivers. Uh but uh, Kyler Murray had struggled toward the end of the season last year a little bit against Tennessee, who's got Derrick Henry, Tannehill leading that team at quarterback. They've added Julio Jones at receiver. What do you think, Paul? Well, obviously, I picked Henry. I was my first pick in my fantasy football league, so it tells you where I'm going to go with this one. Tennessee at home, I don't have much faith in Arizona at this time. Okay. Mama Sue goes with Arizona. I'm going to agree with baby brother and go with Tennessee. I think the addition of Julio is going to make a big difference. I'm a big believer in Tennessee. I like their team. I think they they win the right way. All right. Here's this one's one close to my heart. Who did, who did Miss Betty pick? Oh, she picked uh, uh, Tennessee also. Okay. 
Uh, partially because that's where Elvis is from. There, okay. It's from Tennessee. So just to tell you her logic. This one is one close to my heart. My Cleveland Browns are playing at Kansas City. A six and a half point favorite is Kansas City playing against a Cleveland Browns team that may be set to do something special this year. I'm not going to say they're going to win the Super Bowl, but I'm saying look at that conference. It, they, 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 it could be special. Just wait and see. What do y'all think? Paul, what do you think? Kansas City or Cleveland? Well, first of all, I feel like Cleveland isn't actually in the toughest division this year. Just saying that. I think they're all pretty solid with Pittsburgh and Baltimore. Cincinnati's not so bad. Uh, Kansas City, I'm three hours away from them. A lot of Kansas City fans here, but I'm actually going with the Browns. All right. Mama Sue picked Kansas City. Uh, the good news is I think Cleveland is the second best team in the AFC. Bad news is I think the best team's Kansas City. I'm going with <laughs> Kansas City. Well, you know my pick. It's the Browns, and since my mother loves me, she picked the Browns also because she wants to see her son happy and see them win. Even though she does like Patrick Mahomes, like watching him play. Uh, next is Dallas playing at Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay is picked minus eight over Dallas. It's a big game. Is Dak Prescott going to have much of a year? Uh, can Brady keep father time from destroying him? What do you think, Paul? Well, Tampa's bringing back every player. They're the Super Bowl champs. Dallas, I hate them with a passion. Sorry, been right. I just don't like them. Uh, Tampa about, about two touchdowns at least. Okay. Um, Mama Sue also went with Tampa. I, I also grew up I, from my family with a healthy hatred of the Dallas Cowboys. The bad thing is I really like Dak Prescott, but I just think Tampa's got more horses here. I'm going with Tampa as well. That'll be a clean sweep. Um, my mom, Miss Betty, thinks that Tampa will win. She th As she said, they'll sweep the floor with them. And uh, I think Tampa, but you know what? I think Dak Prescott, I, I agree with you, Clint. I like Dak. I, I love think Dak. He gets a, I think he gets a bad rap. Yes, he has trouble throwing the sideline pass. But if he will, if his offensive coordinator will tailor an offense around him the way Dan Mullen did and the way others have at times at Dallas, I think he's going to have a great year this year. And I I just think he's they're playing, as Paul mentioned, there's so many good players coming back to Tampa. This yeah. is just a hard one to win the first but, game. You know, I'm 45. Tom Brady's 44. I managed to hurt my shoulder riding in a car the other day. I have no idea what I did. I was just riding, and then all of a sudden I got shoulder pain. So, I don't – I mean, come on, Tom. I don't yeah. know how long to keep it up. I get mystery pains, and I don't – I'm – like I said, I'm a year older than Tom Brady, but yeah, um, man. But hey, Paul, thank you so much for jumping on yeah. here with us. Um, you you have a chance to win something. We don't know what it is yet. We don't know if it'll okay. be. It may not be anything. It may not be anything. But you know what? Flashes just... <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> on trampoline. But, okay, <laughs> phone's breaking up, Paul. You got to go. <laughs> All right, hey, good seeing you guys. Thank you for good having me on. Paul. Take care, guys. Right, Thanks, bye. buddy. All right, bye. All right, Clint, that's fun. I enjoy doing those picks. Hold on real quick. It asked me if I wanted to report him real quick. Okay. <laughs> Let me report him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was having, it was like, I was like, man, crap, Scott, because I had – he's like, I wouldn't have normally picked the Arizona-Tennessee game, but Scott's from Tennessee. Yeah. And so, like, I found out after I sent all the picks, I'm like, well, let's – I said, well, who can I get? I'm like, I all don't have a life. Let's get him on here. There you so, go. So, it ended up being a good – I think it ended up being a good choice. Yeah, there we go. He didn't do bad. That's right. All right, let's let's talk about uh, 
Let's talk about this game this last week. Well, I th- you'll do the Holy Snikes first. Okay, let's do the Holy Snikes. Let's do, do the Holy Snikes because it's a good one, and we forgot it last week. That's true. Yeah, we need to do We this. didn't forget this, it. We just ran out of we time. We just have one. This is one we agree with, uh, unless you have something else. But, yeah, I got something else I want to talk about, too, and then we'll go in the game. Okay. What's the Holy Snikes? Yeah. Well, you want me to do mine, and then we go to yours? Well, mine is – What's the name of the school? Bishop the, Sycamore. Bishop the, Sycamore. That's I right. don't even know what their mascot is. Maybe the Sycamores. Okay, um, this in case you hadn't heard, ESPN set up a high school game. IMG Academy, which is a famous, like it's a it's a school where kids go to uh, basketball and football to get their grades better before they go off to big name colleges, and it's a place for some of the best players can practice against each other and play on the same team. So it's a, it's a lot of really good players. Right, yeah. They, they set up a game against this Bishop Sycamore, which was winning a lot of high school games against high school teams. And so ESPN set up this TV game, right, against them. Big, you know, hey, let's put high school football on TV. Turns out Bishop Sycamore is not an actual high school. Oopsie. <laughs> Turns out it's a group of guys that didn't make it to college. So they put together a team and started playing high schools to try to get noticed. So maybe a college would pick them up. Some of these guys are 20 years old. Yeah. Is that right, Clint? Yeah. And, and there, the, the, some of the memes out there, like KJ Jeffrey was sharing on his Instagram like right after uh, Cam Newton got released, somebody had photoshopped Cam Newton on the Bishop Sycamore. <laughs> I mean, it just, yeah. It's so, so and finally, cool. the coach, they, they, would, they couldn't no, – no reporter could get a hold of the coach until like today or yesterday or something. And a story came out. And the coach said, yeah, we have no curriculum. We have no schooling happens whatsoever. The address – for the school was to a rec center. Holy snikes, man. How do you not check how does that he, out? How does he, I mean, look, the fact that IMG played them is not surprising. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. Was it, is it like that scene in the longest yard where they have all the, uh, or, or yeah. the, uh, or, all the guards, or ne- necessary roughness where like the prison bus pulls up. That's right. <laughs> like all this guy, like a Vander Holyfield gets out. And yeah, yeah. Stuff. But I mean, I it's think, just, it's nuts. I mean, is this real life? Yeah. Man, I, yeah, no, it happened. I mean, it, I, I just, the fact that they got on ESPN, because you know how many high schools would have killed for that. And I, and I imagine IMG Academy has a hard time playing games because who did go? I mean, they're probably off his lines like three star, four star, five star, three star, five star. Clint, here's how it took. www.google.com. <laughs> Bishop Sycamore. Let's see what comes up. <laughs> you know, I bet a lot comes up now. <laughs> oh, yeah. A lot now. But that so, was nuts, man. That is, it's so nuts. I'm sorry. So did you see that the Big 12 has four new applicants? Yes. Um, that, and that's kind of what I want to start start talk about my only snack is because okay I get it you know but is the Big Twelve still a Power Five conference adding these teams in? No, I, because I mean you've got the second best team in Oklahoma, the third through sixth seventh best teams in Texas. Yeah, the maybe the best team in Utah, maybe the second best team is a coin flip from year to year. You're adding the fifth best university in Florida, second best university in Ohio. You're just well, you're and, and, tell, and tell who those four teams were. Well, I mean, they're doing Central BYU, Florida, Central BYU. Florida, BYU, Cincinnati, and I believe Houston. Yeah. So to replace Texas and Oklahoma. Yeah, and I just I, I'm I don't, sorry, that's not. You're you're not a I mean it's a power four conference now. I yeah. mean I mean Oklahoma, yeah, I mean 
it's going to kill Oklahoma State, I think, as far yeah. as – I think they're going to suffer the worst. Um, yeah. But, yeah, it's – That's a that's a horrible ad. Yeah, I mean, but who else is out there that they could have added, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, that doesn't make sense. Not at all. All right, so here we go. Arkansas played Rice. They did. And in the first half, at the halftime, we were a sad bunch of pandas around here. Woo. Boy, Horrible. I mean, I was mad. I was going in my office. I was mad. I kicked yeah. the can. Uh, I, I mean, I was like. Now, I will. I want to I wanna say this up front. Because of the way the, the, the game was distributed this time through, you know, you had to pretty much watch it through internet. Uh, I mean, I go. My TV was messed up. My, you know, Fire Stick wasn't working right, so I was having to watch part of it on my phone. I was I was having internet issues that day, and then also normally I, re if it's on a regular station, I record the game, and I go back and rewatch it. I wasn't able to do that for this game. Okay, so. No. So I feel I I don't feel as prepared to talk about it as usual. Well, and you know I don't record games anymore because the last Razorback football game I recorded was the Music City Bowl against Minnesota. Yeah, where they look like absolute garbage. So I refuse yeah. to record them anymore. Yeah, <laughs> Clint's got a little superstition in him. I've got I've got I got <clears throat> problems. Yeah, but um, anyway, so this. <clears throat> There's a couple of things that I just want to say from the get-go. Let's remember, people, football is a 48-minute game. Okay? It's a 48-minute game. I am getting the math right there, am I? Right. Yep. Okay, so when we look at the predictions for scores that a lot of people had, we didn't predict a score on here. But if you look at, at like, if you listen to 103.7 The Buzz or you listen to a lot of different people and they predicted the score, a lot of Arkansas fans, okay? I'm, not, I'm talking about Homer, Arkansas fans predicting the score. The score, the final score was pretty much what everybody said it was going to be. Okay. Yeah. You know, so I want to caution against a lot of Razorback fans thinking the sky is falling right now uh, because it's not. Oh, no, it's fine. I mean, I'm it's not, not falling. worried. I mean, I, I was and here's, worried. And here's the other thing, Clint. When we started this season, before we started this season, if I would have told you, before we started the season, Clint, here's the deal. We can trade, and I'll give you whatever Oklahoma's going to do. Okay? I'm, I'm going to give you whatever they do, however they look this year. I'm going to give you that for the Razorbacks. Would you take it? I Probably, yeah. The rank what number two? Uh yeah. How did their Three, first game? How did their first game go? Oh, they won they beat uh Tulane by five. Exactly. I feel much better with what we did against Rice yeah. um, than what they did against Tulane. And by the so way, just let's, so everybody's not worried too much. For everybody that's yelling at us right now, a football quarter is 15 minutes. So that'd be 60 minutes. Sorry, 60 minutes. Well, I didn't want people just hammer yeah. us in the comments like, you idiot. Yeah, you're right. You I, claim I knew football I, fans, you know how long a quarter is. I knew I got that wrong. Right there, yeah, so. and I agreed with you, so I was like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. I played college football. I was like, oh. Yeah. I mean, why didn't so anyway, you know. So anyway, you see what I'm saying here, Clint? Yeah. It's not that bad. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. We got people saying, bench Jefferson. There are people out there saying, bench him, start the other guy. 
Start the second string guy. He's faster. Did you watch the same game I watched? No. Hey, remember our fat quarterback we were worried about? He didn't look so fat in, out there. But in, what, did he, what was that run that got called back? A 68-yard touchdown run where he yeah. left everybody in the nuts? Yeah. And that wasn't a holding call on Keytron Jackson. I mean, it was a no. holding call, but he wasn't holding. Yeah, it took 30-something yards off that run. Yeah. yeah. No, you're right. And he didn't look too fat running that. No, he, he was good. <laughs> he, he had – and by the way, breakaway speed. He, after that, he, pick, he broke away. He broke after away. his pick, he went seven of nine, if I'm not mistaken. That's right. That's right. So he finished the game seven of nine. Yeah. You know, and then just he, he's and what I love, and then one thing I love about Pittman, I love about Sam Pittman. Sam Pittman ain't gonna sugarcoat it. He's just like he, right. he's kind of. I think he's. He's of the opinion, like, it took me this long to get the job. It's my job. Yeah, yeah. Because he's like, look, there's one opinion that matters. And you're looking at it. Yeah. Which And, and that's my quarterback. And that's my quarterback. Where Chad Morris would come off field, it's an unacceptable performance, just unacceptable. Yeah. Dashed around every question and just. It, I, it was, I love Pittman. I loved his halftime. Oh, his halftime was great. You can <laughs> He's tell. like, he was, we're not playing very good. He goes, we can't snap the football. We can't line up right. We can't get in motion right. Yeah. Well, for the defense, we'd probably be down 30. I'm happy we're only down 10. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he just was, I, I was just like, I was like, ooh. <laughs> yeah. You know there was going to be some yelling and cursing in the. Yeah. And, you know, we got at some point, the NCAA's got to look at this targeting rule. I agree. At some point, they got to realize, man, this ain't right. Because I don't think, look, bumper, and me and you've argued about this, bumper grants hits were both by letter of the law targeted. Yeah. But it just, I don't think they went out to try to hurt anybody. They just went to make good, hard football plays. Well, they, what they've done is on every other rule, Clint, there's a human element to it. Pass interference, there's a human el yeah. element to it. You know, there was one play that uh, should have been a pass interference on Rice probably, but I know why the ref didn't call it, because our guy was pushing and pulling also before the play went up. So they took a human element, and they saw that, and they said that they were, since they were both, Given and taken, we're just going to no call. Yeah. Bumper pulls that targeting penalty. Bumper went low, like he's taught to do to stay away from the head. The guy with the ball went low also. What was Bumper supposed to do? He, there's nothing he could do. He just had to hit him. You, by then, you don't, you can't change direction mid hit. But people get confused and they're watching this stuff in in slow motion on an instant replay. Football is not played in slow motion. It's played, and once you get your body going a direction, and you've committed to that, you can't just automatically matrix yourself and go around. You got to commit to that and go through it. And if you think Grant Morgan on that play was meaning harm to that guy, you're an idiot. No. If he had any malcontent to try to hurt that guy, that was not in any way was he trying. I mean, it just happened to be the way they went at each other. He And, you know, it, I agree with you. And you know what, Clint? Grant Morgan came back for an extra senior year. That him getting kicked out of that game and part of the next one may keep him from being all American. Well, no, he's 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 good for the next game. He because he went out of the first half. Well, Bumper's got to miss. But well, but even that game though. Yeah, no, it hurt. I mean that 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 game may keep him from getting enough tackles. To compete and to because he's already an underdog in those kind of things. Yeah, Bumper had 14 tackles when he got ejected. 
Yeah. With eight minutes left in the game. So you you Bumper would you can't tell me Bumper when he got a couple more tackles. Yeah. Um so for you, what what what's the one area of concern that you have of this Razorback football team afterwards? Um my concern is is that KJ was too dependent on Burks and that the second we didn't really have a second receiver step up. We um, need us we need a second receiver. If Burks is gonna have a good year, and I understand Burks had been in a walking boot up until the Wednesday yeah. before. Okay, so he was not gonna get you weren't gonna get a hundred percent out of him. Um, but it was almost like that's all Jefferson could throw to. That's all he looked for in a lot of ways. In the second half, he started looking to other people, and that's when yeah. that's when Morris and that's when some others. But that that to me, that's my biggest concern is we got to and those guys got to make catches. They missed a lot of balls. Uh, I have a couple concerns. Number one, there there were the drop balls. There were there were a couple of drop balls. Uh, so not all of it was on KJ. Yeah. Um, there was even one that I wouldn't consider it a drop, but it still should have been caught. Yeah. An NCAA receiver, a D1 receiver should catch that ball. Um, the other thing, I don't want to get into that, but but there was um, maybe if you watch like the post-game celebration, I think some of the people that didn't get as much playing time as they would like, you could tell, like you could see it in some of their attitudes, maybe yeah. some that didn't get in the game at all. That's a backup quarterback that wears number four. Um, yeah, you could. He was just kind of like I, you could tell. I think he may have been. But I mean, you probably he probably looked at Rice as this one of them games I should get some action in. Yeah, and then it didn't happen. Um, yeah. So, um, but yeah, I think that stuff's going to happen. But yeah, yeah it's going to happen. Um, but but I mean, you don't like you that, don't like to see that. Yeah. No, but you could see it. Mm-hmm. I, I saw it at the end of the thing. He kind of you know you could. Pittman does his turn that jukebox on, and you can tell that yeah. he kind of turned away before he even said it. He was a little like, all right, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you some of the some of the positives. You know, people will talk about our D line, you know, that's something we've been worried about. Yeah. And th- those two transfers that played did look good. I'd I'd like to watch more film on this. But from the first time watching it, just one time watching it through, I was – I seemed to notice that our guys that have been there a while look pretty good, too. It is. Zach, Zach Williams and Gerald and uh, Nichols, those guys who we were hoping were going to step up, I feel like they did. They were getting pressure on the quarterback uh, in the second half also. So when we have our, you know, the big nose tackle is back healthy. It's gonna be, it's gonna be good. I think. I think. I think we got. Uh, I think we got a good rotation on that D line. Yo, I do, and they they look good. I was really pleased with the D line. I, I, defense, there wasn't a lot to complain about. Yeah, um, we gave up one big play, which was just a busted assignment. And, and y'all, y'all can be mad and yell at them and be mad. That's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the defense realistically gave up seven points. They got – I mean, they were constantly put in bad positions. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of things you don't know until those lights come on. Uh, there, there's, there's some guys that are just great practice players. When the game's out there, they don't come on. There's some guys that they don't play good in practice. Yeah, Matt Jones, for example, was not a great practice player. That's right. But um, Austin Allen was not a good practice player. Yeah, you could maybe even say Austin Allen wasn't a great grain player. Some people yeah, would. Right. <laughs> he, uh, yeah. But no, I was, I was, um, I was, I was pleasantly uh, pleased. Um, I was also really happy, you know, that as the game went on, I think the better we got. Um, yeah. And, and I read a Saturday Down South article about one thing we learned, and I can't remember what they exactly said. And they go, and yes, Chad Morris would have lost this game. Yes, he would have. If this team, 
if this was if Chad Moore's still the football coach, we wouldn't have won a game last year, and yeah. we'd have lost that game yesterday. We would have gone zero and eleven. Um, it just it's, it's you the know, reality. It's, it's, in the post game interview, they asked some of the players. Um, I forget who it was, but some that had been there through the Chad Morris era and some of that. And they said, they said, what was different? Y'all were down at half, you know, or, you know, you went in, you know, not happy at halftime. What was different with this team compared to teams in the half in the past when you went, you know, went in? And they said, they said the teams in the past wouldn't have won this game. They wouldn't have, no the way. Teams in the past wouldn't have said said this team believes in itself, believes in its leaders, in its coaches, and they came out and won. And now, Clint, now here it comes. Them boys from the south, them short squat Texans are heading up to Fayetteville. Those dirty Longhorns. Dirty, dirty Longhorns. Dirty, dirty Longhorns are heading up to the Ville. This is a big-time game, man. Sold out. Um, they're striping the stadium. Yeah. Um, I, I wish I had tickets. I'm, I'm smoking some ribs. Going to do some barbecue tater tots. What you do, people, is you take, take bar tater tots. Put a little bit of barbecue on top of some cheese, some barbecue sauce. They're good. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, I've had, had, them, had, had them for the Super Bowl them before. Yeah, yeah. But man, I tell you, Clint, this is a this is a big game. Yeah, it's a historical matchup. Uh, this is a matchup. You know, until Texas signed up to be in the SEC, we didn't think we would, would see again, probably, or you know, no. may not see it unless in a bowl game. Because this was going to be the last time uh, that we're playing them until whenever, you know. Now, of course, now when they come to the SEC, we'll get to play them. But so much history in this game, man. There's the, the great shootout in 69. There's, uh, you know, 64 and 65 big games against Texas. Uh, you know, that's pretty much – 64, that was one of the big games that got us the national championship yeah. that year, um, you know, to the in the 70s, in the 80s, some big games, you know, in our time as fans, you know, we got the Cotton Bowl win, we got Matt Jones going down there, you know, the, then we got the loss Texas in Fayetteville. Bowl. We got the Texas Bowl. That's the right. borderline erotic game. Yeah, borderline <laughs> erotic. It beat them up. <laughs> that, 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 that don't just don't make sense. He you did you see he lost this? I mean, both are both are former head coaches. I think Illinois lost to somebody they shouldn't have lost to. Uh, to to our former offensive coordinator. Oh, yeah, the Texas Santa and tight end coach. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Barry Lunny and Barry you know, Lunny. They lost trailer, to him. trailer. Trailer, and also um, I'm not sure if you saw this, but it's too good not to mention on the podcast. Allen, Texas, 83 game home winning streak. Not no more. Not no more. It took That's, Chad Morris two games. Two yeah. games. The high, the high school coach. <laughs> yeah, I got a feeling after that. Would you be surprised? If he gets fired by Allen, Texas, oh my god, he'll be coaching in Dover. That's right, yeah, <laughs> yeah, Dover. I'm he's, a like, he's like, guys, he was broken when I got here. Yeah. He was broken when I got here. Oh my, I'm goodness. the right guy for the job. You know, and I really did. I liked a lot of the things Chad Morris said, but it, then it just became. I don't know, man. It, I got tired of it real quick. At some point, you got to quit talking about it and just got to do it. Yeah, that's right. And, and to uh, me, that's what Pittman understands. Yeah. Pittman, I mean, he'll tell you. He'll say, look, this is what we want to do, but we got to get out there and do it. I, I mean, when Pittman was walking on the field at halftime, like somebody give this man his heart medicine. He ain't going to make it. That's right. Because he was, you could tell, like, he was. I mean, but you could, I mean, 
but here's the thing with with Morris, you'd be like, okay, you're mad at me. So what? With Pitt, you're like, I'm so sorry, sir. What can I do to make this better? That's He's right. got that, like, I respect you. I'm scared of you. I love you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He's all got that all together. that. He got all that together. Yeah. He's like, look, you better, you know. He's kind of like he, a grandpa. He, yeah. Kind of like a he, grandpa. You love him, but you act different around him because you respect him. You know, you don't you don't talk about childish things around grandpa. No. Dude, I am, you want, but I'm so excited about this Arkansas Texas game. I got some friends coming over. I'm going, to, I'm going to smoke some ribs. I'm going to just I'm going to watch the game. I thought about maybe going to Buffalo Wild Wings or something to watch it, but I'm like, no, I'm on. I want my recliner. Yeah, uh, I just I want I just want it in my house. I want peace and quiet. <clears throat> Not peace and quiet, but I'm. We got the bros that live behind me that got their little their outside patio. They'll be going crazy. Fargo's all wins. I've never went over there and slapped him high five, but I might. Yeah. Um, so and see, what, I'm kind of I'm kind of the opposite. Big games like this, I just want to be by myself watching. Yeah. Because I want to soak it all in. Because if you get too many people there, you get too much talking and you can't pay attention to what's going yeah. on. I want to I want to soak in every play. But I mean, I still you know. I don't mind hanging out with folks and watching games either, but so, that's a lot of fun. But yeah, I, uh, I'll probably be sitting in my big chair by myself, just texting with you and other people, right. and uh, watching them. Man, I hope we win it, Clint. I hope we do. Now, one thing we do want to do every week here after every game on the Big C Bigger T podcast is me and Bigger T both going to give you our MVP of the game. Yep. So, B- Bigger T, who's your MVP of the, the Rice game? Now, normally, Clint, I'm going to be the type. I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to be able to watch the game over and pick out – I'm going to pick out somebody that maybe not everybody else noticed how good they did. I'm going to pick out a defensive end. I'm going to pick out a, a offensive guard or something, you know, like that. This one I didn't get to watch over. Okay, I'm st- and I'm going to pick an obvious pick. He's one of my favorite players on this team. Is I got to go with Catalan. It, I, it's it, it, he's a no-brainer if you're going to pick a player. He two interceptions. You know, he thought he was going to return both of them for touchdowns. I love that about him. You know, he hurdles that guy on that one. He said, yeah, I probably shouldn't have done that. You know, he's just so – he's just such a class act. And he just plays so hard and so well. Um, I, I just love watching him play, man. I love watching him out there. And I think, um, you know, like I said, he's an obvious choice. There's – you know, heck, I don't know who I'll pick in later games, but usually – I'm probably not going to pick an obvious choice, but right. this one, I, I got to pick it, the obvious choice, Jalen Catalan. See, and, and I guess most times MVP means most valuable player. Yeah. Not this time. Most valuable person. Jamil yeah. Walker won this football game for Arkansas. Okay. The strength and conditioning coach. Yeah. Won this game because yeah. – it, it was it was a lot like the Arkansas Georgia game last year, yeah. But in reverse, yeah. Just at, at Arkansas, you could say their speed, athleticism. No, they were in better shape than Rice. Yeah, Rice was falling out. Rice was falling out, and a lot of people were griping about them faking injuries. I don't think they were faking. Yeah. See, I I don't know, Clint. Uh, I don't know that coach. If it was Gus Malzahn, I'd say they were faking. Right. Because he was well known to do that. Eli Drinkwitz. I mean, Missouri did it last year. There's other coaches, you know, this week, Sarkeesian. I think he would do that. Yeah. I mean, I really really do. So I wondered. But they they really seemed like they were hurt. Oh, oh no, none of them seemed like they were faking. Yeah, you can tell 
They really well, seemed well, like they were cramping up. What was that? Sosa game for Arkansas, he went down and didn't even fake it good. Yeah. Like, he started walking the field and he went down like somebody like, oh, I'm hurt. I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. I don't – I don't yeah. know what was the worst part about the Chad Morris era, either that, the Western Kentucky game, or um, that fake punt he tried to run. They were all pretty bad. Maybe the North Texas um, non-fair catch, fair catch. All right, so your player of the game or person of the game is the strength and conditioning coach, Walker. Can't argue with that, man. No. It, we, that's part of why we won. We were in better shape than them. We lasted to the end. Some of their guys didn't. And depth made a huge difference there. You know, if we didn't have people like Andrew Parker and uh, some of those guys to back up those linebackers, we would have been in trouble. Uh, those guys that were waiting to play. Parker only had like four tackles, but those were big four tackles. And he stepped in and played well. Um, but, yeah, so – and I said, Catalan, we'll see who it'll be this week. Did you uh, hear about the big flub that Pittman made in his press conference this week? Uh-uh. He's talking about Texas running back. And he said he, – he didn't say his name. He just knows him by number. He said, yeah, that number five, you know, he's everywhere. He, You know, he they throw it to him. They He runs the ball. He returns – punts and kickoffs. Well, it turns out the kickoff and punt returner is a different guy who wears number five. Uh -oh. so a lot of the Texas fans are giving him a hard time that he didn't even he didn't even know that those were two different people. Well. So anyway, poor but guy. you know what I want to see more of speaking of number five, I want to see more of more number five. I do too. I, I I didn't think we gave him the rock enough. I agree. Um I agree totally. Rocket Sanders, man, he is that kid. I'm not going to say anything else about him because I don't want to jinx the kid. But man, he now he wow. he struggled in pass pro. I did watch it, get to see enough of it to see that uh, he struggled in pass pro. But oh my goodness, dude. When he had the ball in his hands, he was – there was a couple times he was – he was close to breaking one, you know. And he, yeah, no. Um, as I always thought when Woods transferred, you know, we're like, well, should they move him back? Yeah. Apparently, they really like what they got with Keytron Jackson and some of the other guys. But, man, that guy's going to be – he ran good, ran hard, hit the hole. He's a, he's a running back. And his vision was good. There was one where you saw him, it, like the, he was going here, and he, the hole opened here, and he was with boom. Yeah, that that's, I mean, because you you know, I think Emma Smith is overrated. Yeah, as far as physical tools, Emma Smith had the best vision of any running back maybe to ever play the NFL. And balance, the guy. I mean, he balance. just, I mean, he just he wasn't. There wasn't any of Emma Smith's numbers that are going to jump off the charts to you. No. Wow. He had vision and balance. That guy, those those thick thighs of his, he just was balanced, man. He, yeah. Weevils wobble. They don't fall down. <laughs> he wouldn't fall down very easily. Well, Clint, man, here we go. We got one old SEC team down. We got one more to go. The Longhorns are going to be woo hanging, baby, hanging low. Let's get out there. Let's get some personal fouls against us for doing this after a couple of big touchdowns. I don't care if they get those. Penalties. I think that's just a Big 12 rule. I don't think the SEC's I adopted. think so. Yeah, I, I think. But I, I don't know. I mean, you know, with them coming to the SEC, they're probably made a deal like, look, it was surprising we go out there and Mark Curls is ref in this game. We don't want to um, get our feelings hurt. Yeah, so. If we come to the SEC, got to protect our feelings. Ooh. Got to protect our feelings. Well, Trav, it flew by, man. It did, Clint. The pick em, Uh I got the lead for at least a week. We'll yeah, see up what happens. One, up one on the year. We, we, we've we been one. discussing to make a little wager, like maybe the loser has to be the winner's butler for a day. 
something like that. We'll but see I'd like what Travis happens. doesn't need a butler. I mean, that's it's right. just, I'll that's come right. over and mow your lawn or something. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I got a lawn guy. Yeah. I got a lawn guy. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, Clint, I'm, I can't wait till next week. I'm excited, man. All right, got, so, we'll have another guest picker next week. We got another guest picker. I got him lined up already. Yeah. Um, he's a large, bald-headed friend of mine. So, ooh. so we'll uh, we'll keep that under wraps just in case something works out. He can't do it. We'll just keep Paul as our as a, as a release That's picture. Right, yeah. If somebody cancels, That's we'll right. just break Paul. Remember right, that time yeah. that y'all were playing that softball game? And y'all called me. And Paul just happened to be over at my house. And both of y'all were down like one player. And I pulled yeah. up and, and David T's like, we got Clint. Yeah. <laughs> the team got Paul. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching the Gina Davis show. I it just that one. I don't remember that's, anything. That's other impressive. Than, I literally do only remember because I was like, I made a joke about it. I was watching the Gina Davis show. I think yeah. there was like two episodes of that before it got canceled. Yeah. And, that, and I was watching one of them. I'd forgotten she had a show. <laughs> the only, I don't remember anything about it other than the fact that I was watching it when y'all called me and said, hey, you want to come play softball? <laughs> I was obviously so enthralled in the show. I'm like, y'all come play softball. Where were we playing softball at? Fifth Avenue. Okay, was it like a tournament? It was just a City League game or something. How uh, was it? Okay. Yeah, because I hated I, – I still hate playing catcher. And then you made me play catcher. And I was like, if I knew I was going to play catcher, I wouldn't have came. I don't watch the Gina <laughs> Davis show. <laughs> <laughs> See, I kind of like playing catcher. God, I hate it. I just because I got it. to, I got to run my mouth. Of course, then I was, it would backfire on me because I get up there and talk trash. I remember I talked trash to Greg Montgomery one time, and he hit like three home runs in that game on us. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna shut up now. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> After about the stop. third home run, stop. I was like. I was like, yeah, Travis, just be quiet. So what if he played the saxophone in high school? He's a big, strong man now, and he can crush a ball. <laughs> All right, man. Well, Clint, dude, it's all, as always, it's been fun. Listen, folks, check out my boy, Sean Michelle. Listen to his music. Uh, follow us on Facebook, on Twitter, on Instagram. Podbean, Apple Podcasts. You can download this thing in audio form. Uh, Spotify, you can download this thing in audio form. YouTube, you can look at our pretty faces. That was a smile in case you were listening to it. And uh, <laughs> you can, uh, I was trying to point at my face on the screen instead of just yeah. pointing at my face. And, I don't know what to do my hands right now. And listen, y'all. Carpel good. Yeah. Well, I don't know what to do my hands right now. <laughs> and listen, y'all, tell your friends, tell your foes, tell your family, tell anyone you knows. You like what I did there? You like that? Um, listen, y'all, tell them about this. If you like what you hear, if you like listening to us banner about and talk about these games and, and uh all that kind of stuff. You know people that like that kind of thing, too. Say, hey, have you listened to the Big C and Bigger T podcast? You need to check it out. It's on Apple. It's on Spotify. It's on the YouTubes. Check it out. Because we need more downloads, man. We need more people listening. Don't we? We do. We do. Yeah, so let's do it. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Clint. We out. Sweat, one, filthy, dirt, harvest, hurt, kingdom come. When I work, my hands get filthy down in this dirt Won't see no more than I hurt Cry in your kingdom come Listen I wake up in the morning I bow my head to pray Mama told me if I don't Ain't nothing gonna change These prayers break
breaking up hard rock So I can sow the seed Ain't afraid of no aches and pain Lord knows I gotta follow his lead That's why I swear When I work my hands get filled with diamond is dirt Won't see no more 